When I say the words autonomous robots, what comes to mind? Maybe a vacuum? Maybe a rover on the red planet? Or maybe a fancy coffee-making robot at the airport? Based on the rate of innovation in the autonomous robotics arena, I bet that if I were to ask you that very same question, six months or a year from now, you'd have a list of examples a mile long. And a vital component to any autonomous robotic application is the connectivity solutions that we choose to employ. And guess what, my friends? That's exactly what we're talking about today. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. Connectivity solutions for autonomous robotic applications need to include a variety of orientations, stack heights, and contact systems. In this episode of Chalk Talk, Matthew Burns from Samtech and I explore trends in autonomous robotic connectivity solutions and the benefits that Samtech interconnect solutions bring to these applications. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about this topic from Samtech. Hi, Matt. Thank you so much for joining me. Hey, Amelia, glad to be with you again here on Chalk Talk. Excellent. Okay, so we're talking about connectivity solutions for autonomous robotics today. And this is quite a hot topic these days, right? Robots have been in the news a lot. Yeah, it, there's been a lot of technology innovation in the space uh, over the last several years. It seems like, I don't know about you, Amelia, but every time I talk about robotics, it seems like we're always on the cusp of innovation and one of the things I always like to do when talking about a topic is try to take a pulse of what's going on in the industry. I spent some time just looking at news releases about advanced robotics within the last week or so or autonomous robotics that so many people are interested in. And it's real interesting to see where research, where development, innovation is taking place. One of the most interesting news stories I saw was from Interesting Engineering talking about how researchers at one company are designing a robotic arm that mimics not so much the human arm, but an octopus tentacle. I'm not quite sure all the applications of that, but I, to me, I think that that shows that we're continuing to innovate beyond not only human motion, but just mimicking the world that we live in. Of course, you know, everyone's been geeked out about all the innovation with AI and how that has sort of gone across multiple industries. It's interesting seeing that the leading GPU provider, NVIDIA, is providing tools to enable researchers, product developers, engineers to kind of combine GPU with AI to make smarter robots. What's also interesting too is when it comes to advanced robotics, there's always the regulatory environment. It seems like governments around the world are doing their best to keep up with innovation, whether it's AI or robotics. I saw an interesting news story. This has been going on and on in the news over the second half of 2023, whether or not Amazon's could be able to purchase uh, iRobot. Most people, when they think of an autonomous robot, Roomba is probably the first thing they think of or similar applications, but it'll be interesting to see where that goes. And then lastly, because the robotics industry is evolving so quickly and growing at a steady pace time and time again, there's obviously a constant need to train the next generation of engineers. So it's interesting to see that Fanuc, who's one of the leaders in industrial robotics, is conducting industrial robotic design contests for students, whether that's here in the U.S., elementary, middle school, high school, or even university level. So there's a lot of interesting innovation R&D going on in this advanced robotics space. So Matt, what kind of trends are you seeing in the robotics industry these days? Yeah, so that's an interesting question, Amelia, pivoting from pure R&D and next generation applications to what the market is actually seeing. Samtech and the industry as a whole continues to see growth. There is one report I came across that shows that the expected growth within global robotics, especially autonomous robotics that we see in industrial and commercial applications, is going to grow roughly 4% a year over the next five years. From a marketing standpoint, you know, North America continues to be the largest in terms of consumption versus the three major geographies around the world, Asia Pacific, EMEA, and the Americas. When we look at applications, we typically see expected growth within service robotics. That can be either commercial or consumer. And because of the continued productivity gains that industry, consumer, government, academia are seeing with advanced robotics, autonomous robotics, investment in this space, whether that's done at the VC level with startups or with 
R&D at some of the global technology leaders is going to continue to grow across the ecosystem. You may ask, what are some of the industries where we see uh, robotics taking off? From Samtech's perspective, we typically see uh, robotics applications in manufacturing, medical, supply chain, and machine vision. One thing that I would want to touch on, some of your listeners may ask, well, what is a robot? And there's many definitions, but one of the definitions I see the industry kind of coalescing around, and this kind of ties into the points I shared, is that it refers to the design, development, manufacturing, and deployment of robotic systems. The machines or robots typically mimic human action and multiple axes. And it's typically powered and programmable and obviously autonomous. So it's going to be interesting to see how these trends continue to play out over the next several years and whether we see the growth that's expected from some of the analysts within the industry. So can we take a look at a typical robotic design? Yeah, here, this is a, a basic block diagram that I pieced together from a number of sources. This is based on some of the design activity that we see in our customer base versus some of the block diagrams that some of the leading microprocessor companies have on their websites versus something that you may see in a training course for robotics technicians or even something introductory like at the high school level. And it typically has about six or seven or eight different blocks. We have motors typically in multiple axes. Here we're showing two. There's typically a motor drive circuitry. Most of the applications that we see use BLDC type motors, brushless DC motors. They're very simple. They're very efficient. They're adaptable to the demand of the robotic design. There's typically some type of encoder, optical or mechanical, that tells the motor controller the direction and accuracy of how the motor's spinning. The motor controller itself could be a microcontroller. It could be a motor control board, depending upon the size of the robot. There's going to be a, a variety of sensors. There's, these may be proximity sensors. These may be visual sensors. There may be temp sensors or other environmental sensors, depending upon the application. And then typically, there's another layer of compute on the robotics application, whether that's a traditional x86 CPU-based solution. It could be an embedded computing board. Or we're also starting to see in a home environment, in a factory or supply chain environment, even in a medical environment, obviously you have to have connectivity to the uh, robot itself. So that is typically going to be Wi-Fi, but we've seen instances where there's 5G or ISM style wireless connectivity. And then there's the user interface between the robot and the technician or who's ever using it. You're going to have some sort of LED. There's going to be some type of touch screen. There's probably going to be a power button. That'll interface back to the central processing unit or the main control unit on the system. So, Matt, for these kind of designs, I would imagine that a flexible board-to-board -board solution would be a good idea. You're exactly right, Amelia. And as the leading provider of flexible stacking board-to-board -board solutions, Samtech offers a variety of solutions and a variety of pitches that are found in a number of robotics applications. The flexibility, no pun intended, of our portfolio really allows our solutions to be a preferred interconnect for multiple PCBs that you may find in a advanced robotic solution. We have various post heights. We have various body positions. We have various stacking heights. You know, we can go board to board spaces from 1.65 millimeter all the way up to about 48 and a half millimeter. The number of pins that we can support, the number of rows that we can support is also quite dense. Pitches anywhere from 0.8 millimeter all the way up to 5.8 millimeter, which is uh, 0.2 uh, inches for those of us in the U.S. Something that's also advantageous about our flexible stacking solutions are that they are customizable. We can mix and match headers and sockets to find the right solution. We can remove pins. We can do custom stack heights. Our applications team is ready to assist any of your listeners when it defines a board-to-board -board stacker for their solution. We also offer uh, online design tools, such as our Solutionator for flex stacking solutions. It's very easy to use this tool to find the right board stacker for your specific robotics application. Also for these kind of designs, I would imagine that we would need a variety of orientations. And again, you're spot on, Amelia, with your observation. And I think the flexibility of our stacking connectors ties right into those trends. Are you going to stack boards parallel? Are you going to stack them in a right angle? Are you going to stack them in a perpendicular type uh, solution? Coplanar, we've seen some of those solutions. So we have a variety of orientations and applications to support any type of need that a robotics designer could use at the PCB level. So standard solutions, board to board, low profile, which is really targeted at small stacking heights. We can get down to 1.65 millimeter or 0.065 inch stack heights between PCBs. 
We have passed through, we've seen pass through applications and in some of the industrial computing solutions like PC-104 that are used in advanced robotics. In addition, we also have right angle connectors, which provide flexibility for a number of orientations, elevated, coplanar. For some rugged applications, there's also demands for self-nesting solutions, whether that's a press fit or a through hole part. We talked about PC-104. We also see self-nesting in PC-104+. Plus for embedded computing solutions that are typical of autonomous robots. We also have bottom entry where access to components when mated and space-saving solutions are critical. So in totality, the flexibility of our solutions in terms of pitches, stack heights, orientations, and applications make us the leader when it comes to -to board-to-board stacking solutions within the autonomous robotics industry. So based on all of these considerations, what kind of solutions does Samtech have to support these robotic applications? So we could spend the entire time together, Amelia, talking about all the dozens and hundreds of product families that we have within our flexible stacking portfolio, but we just want to focus in on two. One is our TSW 0.1 inch or 2.54 millimeter square post headers. These have mating compatibility across a number of solutions. There's also mating capability with some of our IDC cabling using an industry standard phosphor bronze contact. There's a a variety of plating options. What's also nice when it comes to robotics applications is the relative high current that these connectors can support anywhere from 4.3 to 6.3 amps per pin, depending upon how many pins are loaded. There's also extended temperature ranges up to 105C with tin or up to 125C with gold. An example of a mating socket with TSW is our SSW series of strips, insulated material. You can see that there's compatibility in terms of the current rating between SSW and TSW. SSW is not quite as TSW, but it gets up to 4.7 amps. Additional benefits of the SSW include single, double, and triple row solutions with up to 150 pins in the mated connector pair for robotics applications where that could be an advantage. So autonomous robotic solutions obviously move in a number of different axes. I assume we need more than board-to-board connectors to route power and signals, right? Exactly. If you tear apart a Roomba, if you tear apart any type of industrial robotic, it's not just PCB to PCB connectors that are in the solution, right? If you think about an autonomous robot that's on a manufacturing floor, that thing's moving in typically like six axes of freedom. So there has to be wires in there to route the power and the signal from one PCB to another, as well as to be able to be flexible in terms of bending and then things like that. So that's really where Samtech's discrete wire portfolio comes in. We have a number of solutions that mix and match very similar to our board stacking solutions. One family that we want to focus in on just briefly is our one millimeter Micromate discrete wire system. Micromate is very flexible because it supports cable to board, cable to cable, cable to panel applications. It uses a crimp-style dual-leaf contact system, which allows for secure mating and ruggedability within the solution. The various families can support anywhere from 2 to 20 pins in a single row or 4 to 40 pins in a double row. Both of those are illustrated here on the slide. Micromate supports vertical or right-angle PCB connections. Another benefit of Micromate is the fact that there's flexibility in terms of wire gauge, both 30 gauge and 28 gauge, and those can be supported with a traditional copper wire or a wire that's coated with Teflon fluoropolymer, which increases the temperature, increases the reliability of the solution as well. For those partners or customers that like to build their own wire assemblies, we can support Micromate either as components or as complete assembly. And we also have assembly tooling available to enable customers to customize their solutions in the lab, especially like we'd see in a development environment or a test environment for autonomous robotics. So I would also imagine that sealed connectors would be a good fit for these applications as well. Exactly. And some of the robotic solutions that we see are used in more rugged environments. It's not just a commercial setting in the home or an office, especially when you get into industrial applications, even in some defense robotics, there may be a need to operate outside where you have to worry about moisture. So IP67, IP68 type capability comes in. And it's not only power and signal, but it also may be high speed solutions such as USB, Ethernet uh, and the like. So in those type of applications where ruggedization, splash caps, IP67, IP68 style solutions, that's really where our Acclimate sealed I.O. connectors come in. We have three types of solutions within the Acclimate family. We have bayonet sealed circulars, which are shown here. 
Those come in 12, 16, and 22 millimeter standard shell sizes. We offer metal, plastic, or field terminations. These can be used for signal, power, and various combinations, as well as the fact that it has dust caps. Our sealed rectangulars are ideal for low-profile, one-use sealed applications. That's traditional for a industrial autonomous robotic application or defense-related solution. One question that pops up all the time is, when are we going to have USB-C? We'll have it released here in the very near future. So that's something of interest to support next generation design while also supporting higher speeds that are found in industrial and embedded computing. And as with the bayonets, sealed circulars, our sealed rectangulars also have dust caps as well. Lastly, we have threaded circulars, which provide rugged over molded construction, also support high-speed connectivity with mini USB, USB, and Ethernet. The Ethernet versions are available for field terminations and dust caps are available as well. So I know that Samtech consistently tests all of their connectors. So can you walk us through all of the elements of that testing? Yes. In essence, we have three types of testing that our products can go through depending upon the application and the solution that a customer is looking for. At our base level, we have what we call DQT or design qualification testing. Every single connector that comes out of our factory goes through DQT. So that could be normal force, thermal aging, mating on mating, current carrying capability, and the like. We also have, as an additional level of testing for some of our more durable solutions, we offer more rigorous testing on what we call our ELP, or extended life products. They're certified to additional rigorous standards, which evaluate contact resistance and simulated storage and field conditions. In essence, we expose those products to a simulated 10-year mixed flow gas for around 14 days solid and also look at mating cycles while in that environment up to 2,500 cycles. So that ELP testing provides additional design assurance to your engineering listeners that the solutions are designed for rugged applications like we see in autonomous robotics. And then lastly, the third level of testing that Samtech has is our severe environmental testing or SET What SET is, is really an initiative to test products beyond typical industry standards or specifications for specific rugged and harsh environments typically found in mill, aerospace, automotive, industrial, and other extreme applications. So examples of some of the testing that we may have there are increased uh, shock and vibe, increased temperature cycling, altitude testing for mill aero applications, uh, and the like. So Several of our connectors that are tested to our set testing protocol are very popular within autonomous robotic applications. So what about your C-Ray connectors? Would they be a good fit for these kind of designs as well? Amelia, every time I talk to you, I feel like we talk about C-Ray, and it's been a commonality of our discussions for at least 10 years or more. It has. I'm always happy to talk about C-Ray. No, but you're spot on in your observation. And the reason being is, you know, when we've talked about flexible stacking, when we've talked about discrete wiring, some of the additional regularization that we have with our testing, that talks about routing basic signals, basic power through the advanced robotics. We haven't really got to how do we connect a high-end motor controller to a PCB or how do we connect a high-end compute module to a PCB for typical power signals. Everything we talked about before makes a ton of sense. But if a autonomous robotics designer needs something that's high-speed, power, analog, all-in-one connector, especially trying to mount a computer on module to the robotics, that's where C-Ray comes in. So C-Ray is a high-density open-pin field array It offers high density, but also low insertion extraction forces versus similar solutions. We have what we call our differential vias, which optimize the performance of the connector up to 56 gigabit per second PAM4, which is typically fast enough for robotics applications. It has a 1.27 millimeter pitch, various stack heights from 7 to 40 millimeter, up to 560 pins, and the connectors are available in parallel, perpendicular, or coplanar applications. We always get asked at Samtech, what is open pin field array? And what that refers to is what's shown here in this illustration is that any one pin in a Samtech open pin field array can support a high-speed differential pair, 56 gigabit per second PAM4 in the case of C-Ray, a single-ended signal, or power. So it makes these solutions very flexible. It makes them ideal for high-density applications, such as a computer on module being attached to the main board with an autonomous robot. And that's the reason we see C-Ray designed into a number of SOMs and COMs targeting autonomous robotic applications. So what about the Accelerate connectors? I would imagine that they would be a good fit for robotic applications as well. 
They are, and for several of the reasons I mentioned with C-Ray, applies to Accelerate HD specifically. Some of the advantages that Accelerate HD has over C-Ray, it supports higher speeds up to 64 gigabit per second PAM4. It has increased density up to 720 pins per square inch on a mezzanine system. Very small pitch, 0.635, so it's about half of what uh, C-Ray is. It can support up to 400 I.O. in four-row designs. So the other advantages of Accelerate, very small 5-millimeter stack height with a slim 5-millimeter width. It's a denser, slimmer connector solution versus C-Ray. And as a result, we've seen Accelerate HD being designed into a number of SOMs, off-the-shelf SOMs or COMs, that are targeting advanced robotic applications. So there's a similarity. How do I link my CPU, GPU, FPGA SOM to the advanced robotics carrier card? And that's where a connector like Accelerate HD comes in. Another example that we have within the Accelerate family is what we call Accelerate HP, which is high performance. The main difference between the HP and the HD is the fact that there's just a little bit more room between the rows of contacts to allow for a higher isolation and for differential pairs to be routed down the axis of the connector. So by making some slight design changes, even though we're using just the same contact system, we can get increased performance up to 112 gigabit per second PAM4 data rates. Now, are you going to run 112 gigabit signals in an autonomous robotics application? Probably not. The versatility of the and the flexibility of the contact in terms of it supporting power, signal, differential pair is really the advantage. But it does offer an additional high-speed board-to-board contact system for the FPGA, GPU, CPU vendor who's designing SOMs for autonomous robotics. A good example of that that uses this application is the Picmic Com HPC specification, which came out about two, three years ago. It's touted as providing server-grade performance at the edge, but with some of the small form factors it has, theoretically, someone could use a Com HPC module in an advanced robotics application. We've also seen Accelerate HP on other embedded platforms that have been used in robotics applications. That's why we mention it in this slide. Fantastic. Well, Matt, can you recap your main points for me? Yes, Amelia. Samtech continues to see growth in the advanced robotics or autonomous robotics market. Not only is the market growing in scale, but the diversity of applications continues to grow as well. Samtech offers a complete portfolio of high-performance interconnect ideally suited for autonomous and advanced robotics as we've discussed. In addition, we also offer a global team of technical experts, online design tools, and world-class customer service available to support any robotics application. We also work with Mauser to create autonomous robotic solutions, a microsite that provides more details about the solutions that we've talked about during uh, this Chalk Talk. And then lastly, any of your listeners can visit mauser.com slash Samtech for more information on, on all the products we talked about. And for technical support, they can email Samtech's experts at sig at samtech.com for additional design and support. Excellent. Well, Matt, I think that's all I have time for today. As always, it was a pleasure speaking with you. It's always a pleasure being on Chalk Talk, and I look forward to uh, future conversations, Amelia. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about this topic from Samtech. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talk section of EE Journal. You can't miss it, it's right across the top. Or also check out YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal.